this podcast. Tune it for the audio, or you can even watch back. Giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. To my man Sammy got it off the ground And to all the listeners tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us, got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping to listen to the sick podcast with tony marinara 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time 
Boston four, Montreal three. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. You found the dogs! John, you found the dogs! He found the dogs! And all together they worked the young team to the top. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup! Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Marinero on this um, Thursday, February 1st. How is everyone doing tonight? It is 10.03 p.m., and we are live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, and we are live on Twitter. Grant McCagg of Recruits and Recruits.ca, as well as the Recruits Draftcast podcast, will join me in just a couple of minutes, but not before I talk to you about our partners and our sponsors, starting with um, Energy Transportation Group, a leading full-service logistics provider serving all of North America, driven to be different. I give a special shout-out to my buddy Mike Cinquino, my buddy Sean Gerard. My buddy David Grassi and their incredible staff, it is an amazing place to work. You ask anybody and they'll tell you that Energy Transportation Group is absolutely A1 tops. Also brought to you in part by those guys right over there. They are La Bitta TB. They are brewed in Quebec and they're a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bitta TB offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bitta TB, embrace your true nature, of course, distributed by the Geloso Beverage Group, and a shout-out to Aldo Geloso and my buddy Ted Farache and the entire staff there. Also brought to you in part by Playground. Discover a world of luxury at Playground. Explore their new 30,000-square-foot expansion with thrilling games, gourmet dining, live entertainment, located just over the Mercy Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. Playground, Playground experience the strip without the trip. And I say hello to Danny with the yellow tie and Ryan and, of course, the fantastic staff over at Playground. And also brought to you in part by Accent Insurance Solutions. All insurance isn't created equal. You know that by now. And you know where to find the right solution for you. Where? Accent Insurance, of course. Accent doesn't sell insurance. They shop it for you to find the right product. Right on the money. Whatever your insurance needs, home, automobile, or business, call the Accent team today. 514 363 3636, a special hello and a shout out to my buddy, Ted Harmon. We thank all of our sponsors for their support. We love you all. Thank you very much. Without you, this couldn't be possible. And we're happy that we're doing it because on what has been a bye week for the Montreal Canadiens, it didn't take away from the fact that on a couple of occasions earlier this week, we had close to, very close to, a thousand people watching live on YouTube at the same time. You add to that, Facebook Live and Twitter Live, and now all of a sudden you're over 1,100. By the end of the week, you're at about 10,000, which makes us pretty happy um, per episode on average. It's pretty cool, but I still think we could take it to three other levels. I want to thank you, my sick army and my sick community, for being there. It is a rendezvous weeknights at 10 p.m., and you're always there in big numbers, and you're always engaging, and you're always chatting. And for the most part, you're all very cordial, and we appreciate it, and it's pretty cool. We've made a nice little community here, and we're glad that it keeps you occupied. We're glad that it keeps you interested, and we're glad that you are having fun with it. I think I'm going to have fun with Grant McCagg. It's been a while since he and I did this, uh, and so let's bring him in. He's a former scout in the Bob Ganey administration, of course, and once again, recruits and recruits.ca, uh, your one-stop shop when it comes to everything Montreal Canadiens prospects, and you can get the whole the whole. The whole kit, everything, for less than $3.50 per month. It works out to less than $50 a year. Access to mock drafts, access to uh, uh, to uh, player articles, uh, access to prospect articles, backed up by all kinds of hours that Grant puts in, breaking down video. We're going to do a little bit of here tonight on the SICK Podcast because a lot of people are asking, how is David Reinbacker doing the Montreal Canadiens' fifth pick overall in the first round in the 2023 draft? And... Who has made it to 
the Grant McCagg's top 10 list as of right now, Thursday, February 1st. These are things that we're going to find out and discuss tonight. Grant, how are you? I'm doing well, Tony. I haven't seen you since you uh, you, you left for uh, Portugal there. Yeah, I was back on uh, the 17th of January, and uh, uh, it takes a while for the jet lag. To, by the way, I'm not a good traveler. When it comes to Europe, that is, I am like just out of it for the first three days. And when I come back, I'm out of it for like kind of like the next six days. I'm, I'm actually going on adrenaline. It looks like I'm okay, but I'm beat up pretty badly. So, you know, safe to say that the, more than a couple of weeks later, uh, two and a half weeks later that I've definitely recovered. It's good, good to see you, Grant. All right, okay. Where do you want to start? You tell me. Oh, I, you know, uh, I guess we could start, start with Ryan Backer. Yeah, why not? Some okay. positivity here. He's, awesome stuff. He's been, uh, he's really come on. Um, uh, Cloton's won five straight games. Now, wow. Before that, they hadn't won more than two in a row all year. So, you know, as much as we loved uh, Jerry, and uh, I mean, that was a great interview you had with him. What an awesome guy. Thank you. He's a great guy. Jerry Fleming's a fantastic guy. Yeah, I was sorry to see him go, you know, but that's the business of hockey, right? He, uh, they weren't getting it done on the uh, score sheet, and um, looks like the new coach is getting them starting to get pointed in the right direction. I think it's probably a little too late as far as I'm making the playoffs, though. And that's almost a good thing, I think, because uh, if they don't make the playoffs, and I think they're about 12 points back at this point, and the season ends in like six weeks or you know mid-March, uh, mm -hmm. even though they get three points for a win, um, I think they're probably – not going to make it. And uh, because of that, I also think that um, Reinbacher will end up coming over. Like they'll, they'll talk him into coming over to play likely in Laval to start and take it from there. Grant, this is what we're going to do. You have some video for us. I think it lasts over a couple of minutes, but at the same time, we have to keep in mind that not everyone is watching on YouTube or on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, some people are going to be listening to this via social gotcha. media platforms like Google, Apple, Spotify. They're going to be listening to it and not watching it. So while the video is playing, if you can actually talk, talk to us about what you're looking for, why you broke it down, what you see. This way, those who sure. are, don't have the benefit of video know exactly what's going on. So with that, without further ado, Agnello, Sammy, and Juliana, Master Control, okay. it is a family business. Roll the tape. <laughs> Well, I didn't prep uh, th that, uh, but I'll, you know, I'll try my best here, Tony. Uh, yeah. Just look at him here. Like, it uh, gives you an idea of how much coverage, you know, how, how how rangy he is out there. He covers a lot of ice, like, and it's not just his right side. He's, uh, yeah, it, it's hard to get past him. Like, he's that he's got that length and, and uh, a long, strong stride. Here, uh, here we see him. <laughs> This is this game was on January 26, and he got two assists. Yeah, not one there. I wish we could show it again, but that's fine. Yeah, he banked well, it let's off. Try and get it, let's try and get it back. Is what you're talking about? Basically, uh, swinging that stick out, using it kind of like a torpedo, right here to break up a play. No, he he banked it off the boards on purpose. Oh, right he banked it off the boards. Guy. Yeah, that's 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 a Nick Lidstrom move. What he just did. It, it is. It was. Uh, it was just brilliant, and. Uh, there's lots of offensive highlights here. I think he had four or five shots on goal in this game. And I, I happened to watch it. It was, you know, they're on their games start at one 45 in the afternoon and there's no other yeah. hockey on then. So it's kind of a good time actually. And I get to see quite a few of them, but uh, you, you see in these that he distributes the puck really well on the power play and he moves yeah. well along the, on the blue line too. He finds the open spot for guys to get him the puck. And then there's a good example of just how hard, difficult it is to get around him out there. Grant, um, his mobility is amazing. It his is. His mobility is really good. And I got to yeah. look, Grant, I'm not going to lie to you, right? Uh, when I saw him at development camp with the Canadians, and I think I had mentioned this to you, and then, you know, there was talk of the Osgood Slaughter and all that stuff that had come up at that point. Um, I don't know, maybe it was the kid was having a really, really busy week, but he looked a little bit, he was not yeah. moving the way he's moving. I mean, this guy, 
you know, if there were any concerns about his 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 movement, his his range of mobility, anything like that, he's moving great. He's skating great. Oh yeah, he's got such a long, powerful stride, and he's and he's still got to get stronger. It's only going to get better. So, and here's uh, another example. He gets he finds the shooting lanes and he gets the shots through, which is uh, he's going to be on the power play for the Canadians. Now I don't know if it'll be you know first power play permanently or what have you, but he will be on one of the two power play units. I've seen enough in the last two years. And this is him as a, you know, 18, 19 year old uh, playing men's hockey, but look at how he, <laughs> you don't get around, you don't beat him to the outside very often. Um, there was a little stretch there and, you know, I think we saw some videos people posted after he came back from injury and the team was struggling. Look at that. Look at that yeah, stay with his man he, the he, entire he, time, he, took him out, used his body physical. You're right. And we have to keep in mind here. And, and you know, every now and then I talk about adding an offensive player and it's, it's, it's not a slight at Rhinebacker, but I have to tell you, this is, look, I'm not going to, this is impressive stuff for a kid playing in a man's league. Yeah. This is, is impressive stuff. And yeah, it's a he, pretty good league, by the way. This is not, uh, it's, it's not pickup with, with, uh, with the guys who work at the garage. It's not far below the KHL. I know the KHL gets a lot more plaudits, but it's uh, the KHL has watered down in recent years, and there's very few guys that play in the KHL that end up playing in the league. And the Swiss League's very fast, very skilled. A um, lot of ex NHLers play there, pile of them, and it's uh, it's good hockey. But he doesn't. Uh, I mean, he doesn't get beat out there very often. Um, I know he had a little stretch there when he came back from injury. Yeah. And the team was struggling where, you know, there, he'd have two or three mistakes. And then you'd see them, you'd see them posted on Twitter. And I think, geez, okay. And I, I'd have a look at a game and say, well, I didn't see any other mistakes. So there was a stretch when he'd have two or three. But honestly, in that game, Tony, there wasn't one clear gaffe that he made. And that's a teenager playing in a really good men's league and it, i mean he chipped into assists he was a big big reason why they won the game he's leading cloton in Cl cloton's defenseman in scoring again as a teenager he's yeah. uh he might be their best uh defender as well so as far as, as far as i'm concerned he's their best defenseman at this point yeah. and uh i see him coming coming over in mid-march and uh yeah going going to laval likely but yeah. it's also the possibility they bring but they don't really have a spot at this point i don't think grant, unless grant they... you talked about if i can grant you talked about the swiss league and you said in your opinion it's a notch below the khl but i'll tell you this though you talked to max lapierre who played with lugano for four seasons you talked to guy boucher who coached at burn for a couple of seasons you talked to bob harley yeah. who coached with zurich for a season they'll tell you that in their opinion the hockey in switzerland is superior to ahl hockey to ahl okay to AHL. i was saying KHL. yeah the ahl okay. yeah that's their opinion i've heard them say that I've yeah heard them no, say I, that. It, and uh, i i think we discussed this before too tony and i don't disagree that it's it's at that level like he can step into the ahl and be a very good player i think um now, I mean, if the Canadians trade Savard at the deadline and and what have you, maybe they don't. But if they do do that, they likely call up Mayu. I think he's I think he's earned call up. So uh, even if they do trade one of the right defensemen, uh, they're still I, I still think Laval's the right spot for him, and and get him uh, get him. I mean, he still get 20 games in before the end of the year, and they've been hot as... I think that there, there's something good happening in Laval, and for him to be part of that and uh, make the playoffs and maybe go on a long run, because they'll get a bunch of reinforcements from uh, from elsewhere as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could get Hudson, you could get Tuck, you could get... there. There's a bunch of guys that could possibly yeah. join the club for the playoffs if they make it. And I think they will. So uh, yeah. it, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I think Laval is going to be the hot ticket uh, in town come late, late, late winter, early spring. Yeah. Grant, uh, I love that video that you put together because I got to tell you, 
<laughs> I, I, I'm, I am thoroughly impressed by what I just saw. I had not seen that video. I had not seen that footage. Of course, you as a scout, you have access to certain software. And I know the software that you use that at the same time, which, by the way, is not free. It's 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 a uh, it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a few dollars. Thank you very much. But you could actually pick out every single one of Ryan Backer shifts. You can pick up every yes. time that he's actually touching the puck and stuff like that. And, you know, that banking off the boards, he knew exactly what he was doing. Yes. He wanted to bank it off the boards to get it to the player on the opposite side. Using his stick as a torpedo the way he did on a one-on-one -on -one to basically poke check that puck away, extremely effective. And by the way, uh, this is a pretty big man with a pretty long reach. Long reach means long stick, all right? Yes. Uh, range <laughs> of motion and foot speed to get from one side of the ice to get to the other side of the ice because there's nobody there and he's trying to get to a loose puck and gets there before the puck carrier. And if he doesn't, stays with the puck carrier the entire time, does not get beat, takes him out of the play, uses his body, on the power play, rushing up with the puck, on the power play, getting a quick shot right away on net before the shooting lane actually gets blocked. There's a lot of things that I saw in just a couple of minutes of video here that I really like. Yeah, Ro almost Robinsonian, you could say. It's some, you know, the way you were just describing that was how Larry Robinson played, you know. So, I mean, he's not Larry Robinson, but you know, there are uh he just got so many redeeming qualities. There really are no flaws in his game. So, um, man, what a problem! He, he's we're the top have four here, defenseman all day, and I I don't see how he won't be. And uh, I, you know, obviously top pairing upside for sure. Grant, even though you didn't say it, I just I have a feeling a yellow's title at the end of tonight's show is going to be Grant McCag colon Ryan Backer is the next Robinson. He no, didn't say that. Not be. He didn't say this. He did say that. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Yeah, I'm teasing. It, be it better you know, not be. And I, you know, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yellow, zing, zing. Yeah. Clickbait, clickbait. Hey, we'll listen. <laughs> uh, it's February 1st. If memory serves me well, at one point, if I, if I understand correctly, at one point here, tell me when. I think you're coming out with the top 32 on the podcast. Uh, prospects. Yeah. 2024 uh, draft eligible. Rocco and I are going to, uh, we're pretty happy with it now, but we're going to watch a, a few more videos of guys and just to see that are on the cusp one way or the other. And yeah. uh, we're going to nail down our top 32 and do a special uh, uh, draft cast that we'll uh, release next Wednesday. Amazing. Uh, I know a couple of weeks 32. ago on the draft cast podcast with yourself and, uh, and Shane Gaumont, uh, who's at the, um, uh, at the charge there, uh, in terms of uh, your co host, yeah. Uh, I know you had Bob McKenzie on, and uh, yeah. Bob, of course, the way Bob does his list, people need to understand something, okay? Um, I don't know how much I know how much you watch, and I know how much you how many games you go to, I know how many hours you put in. When Bob was working full time television. He obviously could not be going to as many junior games as a full-time scout could be going because he was working in studio and he was breaking down NHL games. What he yeah. does do, though, is he has every general manager's ear in the National Hockey League, and he's got pretty much every the director of scouting or most of. So what he does is he gathers a lot of information. He goes around, he talks to all of them, and he says, you know, who would be on your top 10 list? Who would be on your top 10 list? Who would be on your top 10 list? He goes around, and then he comes out with a consensus draft. He does it yeah. for a couple of times during the season, and then, of course, going into the draft. How did Bob's list compare to your list a couple of weeks ago? Your list is what you see with your eyes. Bob's list has a lot to do with GMs and scouts that he's talking to. Yeah. Well, I think 19 of his top 20 were in my top 20. So, oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. But I also do get input from NHL scouts, Tony. I kind of do. It's a, yeah. I, it's sort of a hybrid, you know, because they're, 
there, you know, I, I mean, you can only see so much on video. I, I think I do. I, I've been doing this on video for 15 years now and gotten fairly proficient at it, I think, but, uh, and get out to as many games as I can. But, you know, these guys are, you know, they get paid the big bucks and they go out and, and uh, watch 200 games a year. And I get, I'm lucky enough to have friends that are in scouts in the NHL. And I also utilize that. So I try to combine the two and come up with, uh, you know, as good, as good a list as I can. That's uh, that, that gives people an idea of, of where guys are likely going to go. And um, yeah, it's fun. I just, I love it. Okay. Um, it looks like, the Canadians, no matter how deep they could fall, no matter how big a slump, it would be a shock, I think, if they end up finishing in the bottom four teams in the National Hockey League. I think finishing fifth last, though, is something that's pretty realistic, especially since we know the Canadians are going to be a seller before the deadline. Uh, and who you know, we know they're going to trade Sean Monaghan, or at least I feel pretty certain about that. There's a chance that they trade Tanner Pearson. There's a chance that they trade Jake Allen. There's a chance that they trade um, David Savard. Armia. But then again, you know, there's a chance they trade Yoel Armia. But then again, because Armia's contract is up next year, because Allen's contract is up next year, and because uh, Savard's contract is up next year, and Dvorak's contract is up next year, maybe they might just end up trading Monaghan and Pearson, okay? Uh, so, you know, the more players they trade, the weaker team they're going to ice, you think you would think that they're not going to win as many games as they're going to lose. Let's right. just say the Canadians finish fifth last. And then we'll see what happens after that. Let's just say they finish fifth last. I'd love to take a look at your top 10 right now to see your top 10 list, see if anyone's got a chance of dropping, see if anyone's actually moved up in your top 10. To give me a better idea of who the Montreal Canadiens might be looking at. So can we bring up that list? Here we go. 2024 yeah. NHL draft rankings, courtesy of Grant McCagg of Recruits, Recruits.ca, and the Recruits Draftcast podcast. Number one, Macklin Celebrini, a centerman with BU. Number two, Ivan Demidov. A left winger playing with Shka in SKA in the KHL. Number three, Caden Lindstrom, a centerman playing with Medicine Hat in the WHL, should be noted, a six foot four centerman. <laughs> number four, a guy who at one point, Grant, I think was number two on your list, correct me if I'm wrong, Anton Siliev, a left handed defenseman who's playing in the KHL for Torpedo. He stands at six feet, six inches tall. Number five, Zane Perrick, who's a right-handed defenseman, if memory serves me well. He was at the uh, the Prospects game uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, plays for Saginaw in the OHL. Number six, Sam Dickinson, who was also at that game, a left-handed defenseman with London in the OHL, who stands at six foot three. Number seven, Carter Yakemchuk, who was also in that game, a right-handed defenseman, Calgary in the WHL, six foot two. Number eight, Artem Levshinov. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Grant, a right handed Perfect. defenseman, Michigan State, NCAA, six foot two. Um, number nine is, um, is uh, Jerome McGinley's son, Tej Jaginla, uh, who was the MVP of that prospects game a couple of weeks ago, who's a right winger, Kelowna in the WHL. And uh, number 10 is Zev Bayam, left handed defenseman, Denver. NCAA. Okay. Those are the players on your top 10 list. Talk to me about them. Yeah. Uh, we've seen a move up from Yakum Chuck. Uh, he moved up uh, into the top, you know, the top 10. Um, he had a terrific top prospect game. I mean, typically you don't move guys too far based on the top prospects game because it's, uh, I mean, it's not the best, uh, guys are playing with people they aren't familiar with and you tend not to get too overly excited about it but yeah in his in his uh instance th there were some uh concerns with with some scouts that he didn't skate uh the best 
And the top prospect game is a good, I find a good barometer for, for those players where there, there is maybe some question on whether they can handle a, a, a high paced game. And the top prospects game is, is fast, you know, yeah. it's faster than the, than your average uh, junior game because it's, it's the top prospects from the league, obviously. So for the leagues, three leagues, and uh, he, w he stood out. He was, uh, he dangled everybody. He's just, uh, he's one of those defensemen that, uh, first of all, he has a bomb of a shot. It's, it's like Shea Weber type bomb from the point. So that's going to, he's going to score goals on the power play in the NHL. Um, and his skating, he held up fine. He's, he was fine with the pace. He, um, yeah. he's really good with the puck. He gets the puck at the point. And because I think people are so afraid of his shot, it also opens up the option for him to make moves and to bring the puck in and, and get closer to the net and score in close and make plays in close. So he's got power play potential. He's 6'2", 6'3", rugged, uh, impacts every game. I, I've been watching him all year in, in Calgary, and all the NHL guys have warmed up to him, and I think most of them now have him. Bob was saying that there's some teams that even have him top five now, which was interesting. So he made the move up, and Parekh did as well. I mean, Parekh's on pace for 100-plus points. Tony, the last uh, OHL defenseman to do that in his draft year was My God. Bruce, Cass Bruce Cassidy. I mean, <laughs> we're going back to the 80s. So uh, with my Ottawa 67s, I remember well that, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, defending Stanley Cup champion coach now, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But he's really yeah. improved his defensive game. And that was always the question mark with him. So he moved up. Um, I mean, he, this kid's one of the most dynamic uh, power play guys in recent memory to come mm -hmm. out of uh, come come out of the draft. I keep hearing the word, the name Eric Carlson when it comes to his offensive skills. So, wow, uh, that's pretty exciting. This is uh, the top ten of this draft. Tony is one of the is in terms of quality and depth. It's one of yeah. the best I can. It's shaping up to be one of the better ones in, in memory. So uh, I don't know if you saw that five goal game, the highlights of that, Tony, that I that I had up on a draft cast last week. But that was the most – I've never seen a better junior performance in, my, in all of my years of watching junior hockey than what I saw from Demidov in that game. He just was – he was lights out. I've never uh, – I talked to, I sent it to an NHL scout and, and talked to him the next day. And he said, wow. He said, um, he's one or two in the draft. Like wow. either, a, a, a question can be made for this guy. He's the most skilled player in the draft. Macklin Celebrini is fantastic. He's really skilled and he brings other things, you know, the two way center and all that stuff, the leadership that perhaps keeps him ahead of Demidov. But skill wise, there's not a more skilled player in this draft class. He's uh he, Grant, he's one of the most skilled it, it, it Russians sounds, I've ever seen. It, it sounds like a similar discussion or similar things that were said about Michkov about a year and a half ago. Is that fair or is this guy another level? Well, he's bigger. Uh, I think he's better yeah. skater, a more w well-rounded player, I think. Um, I talked to an NHL scout about it, and he he thinks that there there's just a he's a tier above uh, overall. Like when you combine everything and how it will translate to the NHL, he thinks yeah. that I mean both. You know, I mean, Michkov's gonna gonna be a point producer in the NHL but this kid's uh consistently competitive he um he plays hard his character I've heard nothing but good things about his character and that wasn't always the case with Michkov um yeah so and he's and I think he's more skilled like he's a better skater this kid Tony 
like the the highlights would just make your jaw drop. I'll send them to you, and it just you'll see just how like he dangled everybody. And and the MHL is not a it's one of the best junior leagues in the in the world. And he made he's seventeen year old and well eighteen now, sorry, but he made them all look silly. So uh, he moved back up. He was four and Soleyev was, was two a month ago, like you say. Yeah. But Lindstrom, how can you not pick a 6-4 almost scoring a goal a game centerman? Grant, before we get to Lindstrom, please, is yeah. it possible, do you think that Dimidov will drop because of the Russian factor, or do you think that Russian factor was – was more Overblown? of a factor a couple of years ago because it was Michkov and there was the situation with his dad being killed. There was a situation where, you know, we've heard that he probably is not the best teammate. We heard that there's some attitude. We heard that the team was not very happy. We heard that, you know, we, we knew that he had a three-year contract, that there's the possibility of extending that contract once that contract is up. So yeah. is the Russian factor... Th- it, as strong now as it was a couple of years ago, or do you think Michkov's situation made that Russian factor be what it was? Well, uh, you know, Michkov's like 5'10", and not the greatest skater in the world. He, like, I think the media has maybe overblown just how highly regarded he is in the scouting world. He, like, he, he's a fine prospect, but, I mean... Is he like we've seen what Leo Carlson's do, done in the NHL this year? Like, the, uh, hard to convince me he's that a, he should have been picked ahead of Leo Carlson. You he's know? amazing. Leo Carlson's amazing. Yeah, Leo and I, I mean, uh, other kids that have, that were drafted ahead of him. Um, but I mean, there were Boot got picked in the top twelve. Uh, Simashev went top eight. So they had three guys picked in the top 12. And I, there was no Russian factor, as it turned out. In fact, I was surprised that those guys went as high as they did. So, um, yeah, there were, there were concerns with Michkov off the ice. And, uh, I mean, size is so important to NHL teams, Tony. Like, there's, there aren't too many 5'10 or shorter wingers that ever go in the top five. In fact, you can count them on one hand. You know, um, then when you put in the other factors that were there with Michkov, it's understandable why a team didn't take him till the seventh pick. And if that team didn't take him, there's a possibility he may not have even gone top 10. So, uh, cause I don't think Arizona was taking him, um, you know, uh, later on, like after that with their 12th pick either, um, and a couple other teams that were that picked after Philly. That's right. Arizona was ahead of them, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, and, but getting back to Lindstrom though, I mean, that six, four center that skates as well as he does. It's as rugged as he is. It's scoring almost a point, a goal, a game. Um, wow. That's highly attractive. You don't ever, har- hardly ever see that not be a top three pick in an NHL draft class, but uh, you can, you, you could put Slayev ahead of him. Uh, I mean, you can – those uh, two, three, four, you know, I think they're all close. But I also yeah. think Emadov is close. If he separates himself and that he's also close to Celebrini. So, um, is Caden Lindstrom, in your opinion, a notch above Kirby Doc when he went into his draft year, who ultimately ended up going third overall, a big centerman himself? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. He, um, wow. uh, be a good player. Yeah, I mean, at the same age, but I mean, Doc. We saw Doc make a lot of strides in his last year. Yeah, uh, before his injury, you know. I mean, but as far as at that age, a lot more prolific scorer, um, better skater, more rugged, more consistently competitive. Uh, not as good a passer. We'll give that. We'll give that edge to uh, to Doc, uh, but close, but a better goal scorer for sure. I mean, Doc has never popped a pile of goals. He's not. A, I don't think he's a natural goal scorer. 
And this Lindstrom yeah. kid could be a 35 plus 6'4 NHL center, 35 goals a year plus. So uh, I, I, I just put him a sliver ahead of uh, Doc as far as at the same age coming out of the draft. Canadians haven't had a big centerman like that since Bobby Smith. No. <laughs> oh, he'd be like, I mean, the Canadians are, are set if they got a top 10 pick this year. I know yeah. uh, back in the day, Terry Ryan, great guy and all that stuff. And, but, yeah. and you know, One eighth, they yeah. passed on Jerome to take Terry yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Well, they're picking eight or nine, and uh, Tiege is there. I hope they don't make the same mistake again. <laughs> I hope there's no Terry Ryan out there that they want to pick instead. You, you, you see um, you see a little bit of Jerome and Tiege's game? Oh, for sure. For sure. And uh, I Apple mean, doesn't fall far from the tree, eh? Oh no, you know, and 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 there's guys just outside Tony. I mean, there's really a top thirteen or fourteen uh, at this point. Like just outside of this, you've got the the two American kids, Eisenman, who you'll notice. I mean, early on he was he top slipped, two on a lot of lists, big right? time, man. Eh? Yeah, which well, was going to lead me to my next question, Grant. If I would have told you on September first, and I would have said, Grant, on February first, Cole Eisenman will not be top ten. You would have said mm. what? It's it happens every year. That's what I say. I'd say you can't be surprised by it. There's a, I, I could show you lists going back to Timothy Lilgren being top two right up until you know November of his draft year. Max Camtois was top. Joe Valeno was top three, top four, and a lot yeah. of draft lists yeah. up until. Yeah. I mean, every Valeno year ended going, up going thirtieth. Yeah. Every year, there's a kid that in November is top five that is uh, you know it falls out of the top ten. It it, it happens every year, and uh, there's a bit of similarity to Oliver Wallstrom in his draft year, goal scorer, yeah. goal scorer, you know, top five, top six, and you'd see him drop a little bit as well. He's you know there's some flaws there. He doesn't. He's kind of a one trick pony. You're hearing that with Irisman a bit now too. That you know. If he's not scoring goals, he's not doing a lot out there. He's a winger. He's under, you know, he's a shade under six feet. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I still like him. He, he's he's part of that group along with Consta Hellenius, who he's a first-line center in Liga. So, uh, wow, you know, and he played first-line center at the World Juniors as a draft eligible. So he's a very, very skilled and talented guy kid too that could move back up into the into the top 10 i mean this isn't you know tomorrow's not draft day right tony there'll be some more changes yeah. yet and uh, uh those guys are certainly knocking on the door and and so is brett Connolly, who you know we all saw that four goal game in the michigan and all that that he did at that world junior challenge he's one of the top six seven most skilled players in this draft class so there's a, there's a, and then Liam Greentree, six four kid that blue line in, uh, you, you can't get the puck from him, and he's a goal scorer and a passer. So there's yeah. 13, 14 guys in this draft. Montreal, you, you know, you'd have to, I'd be shocked if they, if they end up with a bust. That's not going to happen. They're going to get a really good player, likely a forward, but I'm telling you that the defense, it's the deepest defense crop that I think I've ever seen at the NHL draft. It's just a tremendous defense uh, group this year. So, Grant, which correct me if I'm wrong. That, correct me if I'm wrong, goal. but I. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said Brett Connolly. It's not Brett, right? Did I say Brett? Okay, whatever. Trevor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trevor That's Connolly. Fine. Trevor Connolly. Correct. Brett I was Connolly like, was the Trevor pick, Trevor of, the, Connolly, pick yeah. of the tap. Oh, I'm sure somebody on. Somebody in the must, you know, the correctors get right out there on that. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, no, no, don't worry about it. No, no, no. I people was, know, I was like, know that it's Trevor it, Connolly and not Brett. Right. Yeah. Well, I was drawing a blank too because I'm like, I don't think it's Brett because that Trevor Connolly, oh, no, right? No, no, no. Uh, Simo the Snake Boisvert, they call him the Snake. I call him Userpent. He like he basically is telling me that Trevor Connolly is like the reincarnation of hockey. Like he is so high on this guy. Every time he joins me, he says <laughs> the Montreal Canadians draft Trevor Connolly. I will buy season tickets. Like well, in his opinion, Trevor Connolly is a top five pick. Now you don't have him in your top 10, but I know you said that can change. 
How yeah. far is he from being able to enter a top five by the end of the season on your list? Top five? Well, so that how, top five how is... Far? Uh, no, he's not your a top, top five, five guy. No. Okay, you don't think your top five is moving. Okay. Well, like, I mean, he's a 5'11", he's a 6-foot winger, you know? I mean, the, you've got 6'4 centers, you've got 100-point uh, defensemen, yeah. <laughs> you know, 6'2 defensemen that are, like, Akam Chuck's almost, uh, he's well over a point a game, you know? Dickinson is just, I mean, you, you, he's got top three defensemen all day written all over him, you know? I mean, Connolly's Conley dangles nice. He's going to score some be- pretty goals in the NHL and stuff, but that, you know, you get up to the NHL and that happens now and then. Like, as talented as Trevor Connolly is, he's not going to dangle people at the NHL level no. every game. And, and I, score, I, I know, you know what you're saying, Grant. You're saying that if you take a look at everyone's game, top five, top 10, top 15, He's not in your top five because you're not as certain that his game that he has right now can translate to the National Hockey League level. Right. I mean, he's yeah. going to be a he's going to be a terrific college player, and uh, he's great, prolific junior. But uh, you know, is he is he going to help you win playoff games? Is he going to be a difference maker on an NHL team come playoff time? I I can maybe uh, a. a, a you know, a point getter, a goal scorer, but not a, not someone that's going to, that, that's, that brings as much value as guys that we've got in the top, you know, five to seven. I mean, uh, you know, Snake, Snake always has an outlier or two, you know. I mean, I know he loved, uh, geez, Krebs. You think he had him third in that draft class with Caulfield Nathan and Krebs, Cedrus, yeah. all those guys. Yeah. And, you know, um, more cider was in Dominic that Bach, Dominic Bach, the year that he, uh, he had him, I think eighth overall and loved him as a winger. And he hasn't even cracked the NHL yet, you know? So, uh, I mean, these guys can look really, the performance is great. They look great in their draft years for what league they're playing in and they're skilled and stuff, but you still have to translate it to the NHL and Connolly, um, should be, you know, he, he'll be a skilled secondary guy on, on a good team that will get you points. And uh, I, he's not going to be a bad pick, but do you yeah. take him over, uh, you know, like, I mean, I can name Lev Shunov, uh, a lot of guys that just the 20 minute defensemen that are going to rack up points for you and play on your power play. Uh, tough to take a 5'11, um, slight winger that overhandles the puck at times and uh, doesn't yeah. necessarily always, you know, doesn't necessarily uh, always play a two-way game. It's tough to take him over over a 6'2 mobile big defenseman that's yeah. a, more than a point a game in college already. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, funnier things have happened. Brett, you know, Brett. Trevor Conley might end up being one of the best players in the draft class. And that's the beauty. Yeah. That's the I beauty of the draft. You don't know. And, uh, yeah. you know, you hope that uh, you hope that you're right at the end of the day. Who's the best prospect out of the Q grant? Oh, <laughs> we were talking about that. It's not a banner year. Uh, no. uh, may, might be boy. Are. He's the okay. most skilled. Uh, he had a really good top prospect game. Yeah, um, he's. I've in heard the about the Massey kid who was a big right winger. He's having a pretty good season, supposedly for Shakutami. I don't know where he is. On the yeah, he, he he's dropped a little bit. I think uh, just the skating is. is uh, I mean, uh, he's a big, heavy kid. You like the way yeah. he plays. He's competitive. He scores goals. Yeah. He's putting up points. But his he's got heavy feet, and. Uh, I went and saw him live uh, about a month ago, and uh, there, there's some questions whether he'll be able to pl- keep up with the NHL pace. And that, wow. I mean, he's got good upside if he puts it all together. But yeah, floor is important too, Tony. And uh, yeah. you don't want a guy that doesn't make it 
if you're picking him in the top 40, yeah. you want a guy that plays for sure. And skating yeah. might uh, hold him back. So there's a question yeah. there. Um, the beauty the beauty of uh, this kind of scouting folks, especially these amateur play, it is without a doubt the toughest thing. What Grant is telling you, uh, you know, there's a lot of facts behind everything. And then all of a sudden, uh, Mark Stone skating scouts like they 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 thought he was a terrible skater, right? And he's gone on to be like a, a very big time player in the National Hockey League. So you know, true, um, true. You, you can't yeah. under, you can't underestimate character too. That's a very hard thing to 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 judge sometimes and to scout. Uh, you know what the player has in his heart and how how much they're yeah. willing to dig deep. But uh, do, do do scouts Grant still view the Q? the way the label that the Q has got in the last couple of decades. And that is a lot of one dimensional players. Uh, um, we've heard that right. In terms of uh, some more offensive players, maybe you don't have the grittier guys and stuff like that. I, I know it's rather generic, but whether it's fair or not, it was a label that was given by some. Is it a label that still sticks for those who believe that? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's not as, uh, I don't think it's as well-rounded a league as the other two junior leagues. I mean, part of it is, uh, um, just the, the skill level is not as good either. Um, it, there's a tendency for the, the skilled player to be undersized in the queue. Yeah. There aren't, you don't see a lot of, uh, six, two plus guys uh, in the top 20 scoring you know typically um so it i don't know that it, it's that late it has that label necessarily i mean you've had a lot of uh, guys come out of the queue in the past two decades that are heart and soul players you know like the kid that just won the mvp of the, the con smite trophy marcia so marcia so you know gourd uh i mean i could list Tons of them. Marchand. Yanni Gord. You know, Brad Marchand. Does is he uh not yeah. competitive? <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's funny you bring him up because there's a lot of people that didn't know that Brad Marchand played in the queue, but he did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maritime. Yeah. Maritime. Right? Yeah. But uh, uh you know, you can list a lot of guys that uh are really uh are HP on the Habs. You yeah, know? not many guys compete. Harder than uh, Raphael uh, Harvey Pernard, you know. You, yeah. you can uh, you can almost list one on e pretty much every team that that has a uh, a, um, a heart and soul kind of guy. So they're there. Yeah. You just you got to find them. <laughs> I like Pajot. That's, that's Pajot's our job. Pajot's a good player, heart and soul kind oh, of player. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, Jean Gabriel Derek Pajot, yeah. was a Mister Playoff. You know, help yeah. teams every year in the playoff uh you can keep listing them uh, you know just about every guy kid that's playing in the in the nhl that came from the queue uh made it because he was competitive so like it's funny like the boyar kid loads of skill great skater you know smart player but i've seen him i've watched you know he'll go four or five games without throwing a hit, you know? So it concerns you because you have to compete no matter how skilled you are in NHL. There's guys as skilled or more skilled. So you have to compete on top of that. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, there can't be any weaknesses in your game or you'll drop some on draft day because of it, because it might keep you out of the league. Lucien Dubois was uh, Lucien Dubois was a was a hardworking player too. Oh, we we, yeah. we can we can go through so many of them. That you're right. You're right about that. Okay, yeah. so when's this uh, top thirty two coming out again on the uh, Recruits Draftcast podcast? Yeah, well, we'll get. Uh, I think we're going to launch it next Wednesday. There, when everybody's out at the. Uh, when when some people we know are heading to Super Bowls and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. By the way, for those watching, uh, Agnello, Sammy, and Juliana, they're heading out to the Super Bowl. That's right. They are going to Vegas to the Super Bowl. 
Yeah. <laughs> not a, not bad. They're going yeah. to Vegas to the Super Bowl, and you got to Grant's you got to be to. home in Ottawa with his recruits draft cast podcast <laughs> coming out with his top thirty two. I'll be here in my basement Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, ten p.m. You, well, you got to you got to, to Super go down to Miami and see uh, Messi sitting on the bench, didn't you? For a couple, of yeah, games? yeah, yeah. I spent a thousand dollars for two tickets on the Wednesday night and a thousand dollars for two tickets on the Saturday night, and he was injured. That's <laughs> folks in a nutshell. That is the story of my life. Grant, thanks so much for doing this, my man. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. He is Grant McCagg of Recruits and Recruits.ca. And once again, sign up to his publication for less than $350 a month, less than $50 a year. It's your one-stop shop. You'll get absolutely access to everything, player interviews, articles, scouting reports, mock drafts, everything you'll get from. Special thanks, of course, once again, to Energy Transportation Group, to Labita TB, to Playground, and to Accent Insurance Solutions. I want to thank you, my sick army, and you, my sick community. Please, please, please do me a favor. If you love the podcast and you love me doing it, this is going to go a long way what I'm going to tell you, all right? Go to Apple Podcasts. It's going to ask you for reviews and leave us a five-star review. The only way that we can really feel the love based on what we get on social media and this and that is in the five-star review review it's the only way we can feel the love i also want to remind you sammy's first annual poker gala is coming up it's going to be at playground on saturday february 17th at 6 p.m get your tickets now sammy's going to be there Agnello's going to be there juliana's going to be there i'm going to be there we're going to play poker at playground proceeds go to cure sma spinal muscular Atrophy for tickets 514 219 2725. To purchase your tickets, call 514 219 2725. For Agnello, Sammy, and Juliana at Master Control, who are about to leave in a couple of days because they're going to the Super Bowl in Vegas, they're living the life. I'm Marinaro in my basement. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.